Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, September 8, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. And if you are listening to this podcast regularly, I guess you got the idea by now that old things never really go away in this business. And Jan has a good reminder here of a Visual Basic 6 executable that was encoded using XX encoding. XX encoding, pretty old. I vaguely remember it from sort of some early email attachments where uh, this type of encoding was often used to send binary files via email. Of course, these days, Base64 encoding pretty much uh, sort of replaced that. It looks at first sight a little bit similar when you're looking at the text in XX encoding. Now, the reason that an attacker will use an old technique like this is often to evade anti-malware tools. It doesn't seem to be terribly successful here. 21 out of 68 engines at virus total are recognizing this file as malicious. And Didi wrote up this weekend a diary answering a reader question. And again, we love those reader questions. In this case, it was a what the reader considered a little bit an oddly formed office document. Didi explains how this is actually perfectly normal. Uh, there is a zip file that sort of at the beginning of the document, while the entire document is a zip file itself and the reason for this is simply just that there is theme data that's being included as a zip file and sort of prepended to the actual document and the DA walks you through the extraction of this data and how to recognize it. But also good observation from the reader to actually notice uh, this. And yes, uh, zip files do sometimes contain additional garbage at the beginning or at the end in order to obfuscate the actual zipped content. And then we got an interesting cross-site scripting vulnerability in Golang. Now, Golang isn't used a lot, I would say, for web applications, but certainly somewhat popular. And the problem here is that the behavior between CGI and fast CGI is not quite consistent. I actually almost could compare this to like mime sniffing, which has been a problem in, for example, Internet Explorer and typically should be explicitly disallowed by the web application by setting the appropriate no sniff header. Another issue here is also that, of course, in order to encode properly, you need to know what's the actual content type being used to deliver the document. The problem here is that Go tries to, or at least has the option if the developer doesn't set the content type to automatically come up with a content type. And then you have the typical confusion in different libraries to try to detect content type where you have an image that as an exif comment includes some JavaScript and all for a sudden the library thinks, oh, that's HTML. So let me send this with content type text HTML, which then leads to the JavaScript to be executed. I think uh, this is not really as much a problem with Go itself, but almost more a problem with developers not setting the content type explicitly. You always should define the content type and not leave it up to just some algorithm that looks at a few header bytes in order to set the proper content type. And Visa is warning of the Baka JavaScript skimmer. Uh, This sort of is uh, copying what Magecard has been doing by injecting JavaScript into web pages. And then the JavaScript is being used to record keystrokes, of course, in particular targeting payment card data and credentials. Looks like in this case, the attacker actually does compromise the victim's website and then inserts a script tag that will load the content from a remote website. 
Theoretically, I guess a content security policy may be of help here because then you could limit from which websites content is being loaded. But of course, an attacker could probably easily, if they already have that server compromise, able to change a content inject to complete JavaScript or maybe even add the file to the server. That of course all depends on how that particular web server was exactly compromised. And well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.